untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're taking a look at Black White Angels which features a few cards from the Kaltheim theme boosters. So these cards didn't appear in draft boosters but we still get two copies of a Rampage of the Valkyries, a 5-man enchantment that when it enters a battlefield creates a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying and vigilance, and says whenever an angel we control dies, each other player sacrifices a creature, so very powerful in an angel tribal deck. And then another theme booster card is Youthful Valkyrie, 2 mana 1 3 Flying Angel. Says whenever another angel enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Youthful Valkyrie. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, some of the payoff cards for the Angel Tribe include a Righteous Valkyrie, a 3 mana 2 for Angel Cleric with flying, says whenever another Angel or Cleric enters the battlefield under our control, we gain life equal to that creature's toughness, and as long as we have 27 or more life, creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2, so very powerful payoff for the Angel deck. And then at 4 mana we have 4 copies of Retribution, the Enchantment Saga that on the first chapter makes a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. On the second chapter, until end of turn, angels we control gain the ability to tap to destroy target creature with power less than this creature's power. So the great thing about our vigilance tokens is that they can still attack and potentially tap down after attacking to destroy an opposing creature. And on the third and final chapter, angels we control gain double strike until end of turn. So that can represent a massive amount of damage. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck at one mana, we've got some cheap spot removal with Blood Chief's Thirst can be kicked to take out larger creatures and planeswalkers. And two mana, the full playset of a Vanishing Verse as another flexible removal spell that exiles a target monocolored permanent. And then Luminarch Aspirant, a two mana 1 1 human cleric, so it still synergizes with our Righteous Valkyrie. And at the beginning of combat on our turn, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, so just a very powerful 2 drop by itself. And then at 3 mana, we've got our full playset of Valkyrie and the full playset of Skyclave Apparition as a 2 2 spirit that when it enters the battlefield can exile up to one target to non land, non token permanent we don't control with mana value 4 or less. And then if the opponent gets rid of the Skyclave Apparition, they get a blue illusion token whose power and toughness are equal to the mana cost of the exiled card. And then at 4 mana, besides Retribution, we also have the full playset of Starnheim Unleashed, which has Fortel, so we can spend 2 mana to exile it and then cast it later for double X and white, in which case we get to make X, 4-4 four, four white angel warrior creature tokens with flying and vigilance, or we can cast it for 4 mana and make a single angel token instead. Although for the most part we're interested in making multiple angels, so if we exile this on turn 2, turn 3 we can make 1 angel for 3 mana total, but for 5 mana we already get to make 2 angel tokens and it scales very nicely into the late game, so great card when you're flooding out a bit. Then we've got two copies of Legion Angel, the 4-3 Angel Warrior with flying, and when it enters battlefield we may reveal a card we own named Legion Angel from outside the game and put it into our hand. So we can grab an extra Legion Angel out of our sideboard in best of one, and we've got two copies of Legion Angel in the main deck and two in the sideboard to search up. Then we've got a Rampage of the Valkyries, and then two copies of Emiria's Call as a land that can also be cast as a 7 mana sorcery, making two 4 4 white angel warrior creature tokens with flying, and then our non angel creatures gain indestructible until our next turn. And then the mana base includes two copies of Cave of the Frosted Dragon as a creature land that can turn into a 3 4 dragon with flying. Then we've got seven planes, seven swamps, four of the black white pathway, and four of the black white snarl. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play here with a fine hand. I think we'll play this one tapped. Can keep up a turn 2 Vanishing Verse, turn 3 Valkyrie. Well, now I'm incentivized to play Cave to an extent, although I wouldn't be able to keep up Vanishing Verse. Yeah, I think uh, curving 3 into 4 is still too important, and then we'll just foretell Starnheim Unleashed instead. Of 
opponent's mono green so far. Blank green it is. We'll hit for two, play retribution. And yeah, back-to-back -back retribution represents a lot of damage, especially on the third chapter where our angels gain double strike. And by playing Retribution main phase next turn, we'll get the plus two plus two bonus as well. All right, binding. Gonna take care of the angel token, but we can still make the play we described. And we'll play tap to Mirius Call. So next turn, our angels gain double strike, which would be 20 damage in the air. A Gnarled Professor, and then they might have a fight spell for one mana to take out one of our angels. Three or more Snowlands means that Blizzard Brawl can take out our Angel Warrior. Opponent gets Containment Breach, and our opponent decides to fight a Righteous Valkyrie instead. All right. So we have a few options. If I Starnheim Unleashed, I can make two angels here, which is reasonable, or we can play a Legion Angel, keep a Vanishing Verse, especially in case of another Blizzard Brawl. Almost had enough for lethal here with our cave. Alright. This way we keep our Starnheim unleashed in case our opponent has a sweeper here. You never know, they might have a blood on the snow. It's gonna be an eye twitch for now. Professor attacks, we'll take it. And then end of turn we can exile Eye Twitch. Clear a path for our flyers. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not going to be able to keep a hand without white mana. All right, this is a bit better. And then it's either Rampage, Starnheim Unleashed, or Apparition that goes. And I think it's gonna be Apparition. Since we already have Thirst as cheap removal. All right, Magda we can take out. Question is whether I wanna Aspirant first. I think so, because then next turn we can Fortel plus Thirsts. And one treasure is probably not gonna make that much of a difference. Opponent is playing with Malika Rebirth, a way to potentially save Magda. Alright, Vanishing Verse, nice answer for Merchant as well. But I think we're gonna stick to the plan, or are we? Yeah, I think uh, killing Magda's fine. Opponent's probably playing Goldspan Dragon, so I want to keep Vanishing Verse as an answer for that. Fortel. Not gonna bother attacking. Opponents got throwing thirsts. That's fine. Deadly dispute on the treasure to draw to make another one. And then we can apparition the merchant. 
If I had the option of exiling their treasure, I would, but sadly, Apparition is non-token. Because her opponent is clearly struggling with their mana here. Alright, we can play Rampage, which then sets up our Starnheim Unleashed beautifully. Rampage shines in these more grindy matchups. Alright, Crackle with power. It's gonna trigger Rampage. Merchant down. Could play Youthful Valkyrie before Starnheim Unleashed, which is reasonable. And then keep a Vanishing Verse, which can maybe tag a Goldspan Dragon. Although Valkyrie chumping the Goldspan would already be enough. There's a gold pen. I think I'm fine exiling it. Bone gets a treasure. And don't really expect a sweeper. I guess they could have a blood on the snow. Which would be a reason to hang on to the Sternheim Unleashed for an extra turn. Opponent is playing snow lands. Yeah, Blood on the Snow would be pretty backbreaking if I go for Starnheim here. So we'll give him a chance to cast it. They've got six mana. Including a merchant they can bring back out of the graveyard. It's gonna be a Kalein. Making another treasure. Well, I think we uh, unleash Starnheim now. Make two angels, get in for a ton of damage. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Have to decide whether to play Emirius Call tapped or not. I guess one of them... We can play as a land. And then we're looking at turn 2 Aspirin, turn 3 Exile Sternheim Unleashed to maybe make 2 Angels on turn 5, facing a red-green with turn 2 Rangers class. Dragon's Guard Elite points towards lots of cheap ways to enable Magecraft, including Shock for Aspirants. Alright, so we're pretty far behind on board now. Gotta hope that Retribution can catch us back up. Maybe if they can't answer the Angel token. Magda, also an excellent play here. So they can get one creature past or angel with the ranger class. Maybe the Dragon's Guard elites can pick up another counter if they have an instant. Opponent sends both. Including Magda, so probably implies they have another shock that they can use to finish off my Angel. Now, if we just take the damage, then we would just be dead to a shock since they can shock my face, grow the elites, so I'm kind of forced to block here. Elite is six mana to double its counters. If it's a Snakeskin Veil, I don't want to block the Dragon's Guard elites. If it's a Burn Spell, I'm fine blocking the elites. And then next turn the two 
for four angels from Starnheim Unleashed can line up profitably. Yeah, sure. It's just a shock on her face. So, good thing we blocked. Apparition could also be a good play here. Although, I think I prefer Starnheim Unleashed. And make two angels. They can force a trade with Ranger class. But we still have a good block with the second angel. Alright, gold span also kind of forces us to trade, so. We're gonna fall to one. Alright, but we do get to double spell here. Skyclave Apparition on Magda, plus Aspirant's one option. Could also Apparition the Ranger class itself. Although Magda threatens to make a fourth treasure, so that's getting close to searching up a dragon. But Retribution plus Aspirant is a more mana efficient play. The only problem is... I guess there's not a problem. I can uh, put the plus one counter from Aspirant on the Angels, so it lines up well against uh, four powered Magda. And then we can start making progress with the second chapter at least. Yeah, that's fine. And then next turn I can Apparition the Ranger class and use my Retribution to deal with Magda. Right, opponents leveling up Ranger class, that's fine. Sentinel is acceptable, allows them to tap Magda to make treasure, but we'll take out Magda here. Alright. So six mana available, I think I hang on to Emiria's Call and then just Valkyrie plus Apparition the Ranger class. And this has Vigilance, so we can attack. And then we'll put a counter on Youthful Valkyrie, perhaps. To diversify a little bit. And then we'll take out Magda. Still have our Cave of the Frost Dragon we can activate as well. Right, Blizzard Brawl takes out Skyclave. So that's gonna force a chum block on the Elite. Serpon does have a Reach creature to chum block next turn, so they're not necessarily dead to the ch second chapter. Because they can chum block my 5-5, five five, and then they would only take 7 between the cave and the youthful Valkyrie. I think I prefer jumping with Aspirants. Especially if we hit an untapped land for Emiria's Call, the Valkyrie's gonna get quite large. Another Magda. Righteous Valkyrie. Pretty good draw too. Alright, so... Yeah, the 5-5 five five gets to attack for free. I guess I'm still in trouble here. Because her opponent has more attackers than I have blockers, and I wouldn't be able to gain life of Righteous Valkyrie. So I think I'm just dead. If I attack with the 5-5, five five, there's a small chance they jump with Sentinel, but if they just take it... I would be dead next turn. 
But if I attack with a youthful Valkyrie, they're chumping for sure, but the youthful would be tapped. So I think my best chance is just hit with a 5-5 five five and hope that uh, they chump. Opponent's gonna take it. And then I guess we play Righteous Valkyrie and keep up mana to represent having removal at instant speed. And we'll see if they go for it. Another Ranger class. So yeah, we needed the untapped land for Mirios Call to win the game here, pretty much. So yeah, close game. Possible that putting the Aspirant counter on the 5-5 five five Angel would have worked out better here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Valkyrie into double Righteous Valkyrie. Facing another life gain deck. This might be a green-white variant. Nope. Just uh, black-whites. Maybe focus more on clerics than angels. I'll hang on to my basic land in case of more snarls. And I think we'll have enough life gain here between all our angels that we can afford to play Youthful Valkyrie instead of Aspirin turn 2. And then I might as well attack since we still don't have a good block on the Cleric. A little surprised they didn't just activate Soul Manor before damage last turn to get in one more point. Alright, this time they're going for it. So we don't have any great answers for Cleric of Life Spawn since it doesn't die to our own Vanishing Verse, as we see here from our opponent. Although Apparition will do just fine. Blood Chief's Thirst would have been another one. So, yeah, getting rid of this Cleric seems a bit too important, even though we have to play off-curve. And then next turn we can decide if we want a double spell. Spellbinder might take Righteous Valkyrie or Starnheim Unleashed. Goes for Righteous Valkyrie. Ah, Vanishing Verse can answer the 3-1. But I still kind of like Youthful Valkyrie plus Aspirant here. And then put counter on the 1-3 so it can block the Spellbinder and attack with both. Opponent trades, they're not getting their Cleric back, so that's fine. Let's see what they can do with 4 mana. Opponent passes, so they're setting up a removal spell. Well, I probably want to play Righteous Valkyrie before attacks to grow my Youthfuls. Even though they might have another Vanishing Verse for Righteous Valkyrie now. And I'll start putting counters on Aspirant, I think. Hit for 7. And then if they want to kill Righteous Valkyrie... We're still at a pretty healthy 12 life. Opponent just doing nothing. Maybe they've got a sweeper here. 
Nope, just another Spellbinder. Can still cast a 4-mana Vanishing Verse to clear a path. And a Righteous Valkyrie, also quite strong here. Do we think they have a Sweeper is the question. Not really, they probably would have casted last turn. Although what Sweeper are we talking about here? Doomscar they couldn't cast. And the black ones aren't powerful enough to kill our High Toughness Angels. But in the event that they do have a Sweeper, Exiling Starheim Unleashed is the safest option. So let's start by attacking. And see what they do here. Keep putting counters on Aspirants. Can hang back to block the 2-2, don't want to trade it for the Spellbinder. Our opponent is jumping. So it's a little suspicious here, we'll just uh, foretell. And then hang on to the second Righteous Valkyrie. Maybe they just need land 5 to cast a Sweeper, but they didn't find it. Either way, opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand has a little bit too much in the removal department. There will be matchups where this hand can line up favorably, but on average I think I prefer a Mulligan. And this is better. And then it pains me, but I think I get rid of the Starnheim Unleashed. And then uh, go with the Valkyrie into a Righteous Valkyrie line. Opponent on mono green. After drawing two lands, can regretting bottoming the Sternheim Unleashed. Opponent curving out quite nicely. We'll have to hang back. So pack leader draws a card, they can turn it into a 5-3. But it would take up all their mana, so I think a double block is still reasonable. Alternative would be just take 7 down to 9, next turn play Righteous Valkyrie. But we're not going to get close to 27 life, so... Uh, Aspirant, so good draw. And then now the youthful Valkyrie can block the troll. Chariots for more board presence. And a Sentinel. Ooh, Retribution was an excellent draw. So I think it's time for Retribution. And that's gonna gain a bunch of life, and the second chapter especially, going to be quite devastating. We'll hang back for now. Aspirin can also help us get a little bit more power for the second chapter to line up better, and our opponent knows that they're in trouble here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Aspirant into Valkyrie. Facing turn one Usher, so it could be a white aggro deck. And between the life gain from Valkyrie and the removal from Apparition, we have some good tools in this matchup. 
opponent stuck on one land as well. Yeah, if we can curve Valkyrie into Retribution, the Retribution is going to be quite backbreaking. Right, they did find a second land at least. Portable Hole, good answer for Aspirants as well as creature tokens from Retribution, for instance. And then could Apparition instead of Righteous Valkyrie. Although if the plan is to Retribution next turn, I think having Valkyrie in place is going to be better for us. Also blocks both of the opponent's creatures. Alright, Warhound's a nice way to catch back up on lands. Opponent plays a land. So maybe their plan was to... Uh, Use a Warhound all along, and they missed our land drop on purpose, who knows. But uh, Retribution looks good here. And next turn we get to Double Spell. Keep the Valkyrie on defense. And next turn we can potentially wreak havoc on the opponent's board with the second chapter. Professor can learn once again, gets reduced to memory. And exiles or enchantment altogether. Well, there's another one. Is it better than double spelling is the question. Apparition could also exile the portable hole to get my aspirant back. Yeah, I kind of like uh, double spelling. And our opponent packs it in to the double Luminarch Aspirant. They don't have any good attacks and we're quickly going to take over in the skies. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a removal heavy draw. But yeah, could line up well against some creature decks. Could use more angels to go with Retribution. Let's see what we're up against. Snow covered swamp into shambling ghast. Don't actually hate exiling that, given our hand of double apparition. No shortage of removal. Now Valkyrie, another decent turn three play. And if they have a turn two deadly dispute, sacrificing shambling ghast can allow some very explosive starts. So our opponent's red black. Colleen shows up. And now I'm just liking Retribution over Vanishing Verse. And we can still Vanishing Verse a Gold Span Dragon if that shows up. There's also an argument for leaving back Valkyrie. Since Gold Span would be a 5 5, so we can trade for the token. We probably don't want to trade to begin with. Ah, there's a gold span. to attack. And finish off Colleen. Could see deadly disputes. And then we'll vanishing versus gold spanner response. In case they draw into another deadly dispute with the draw two here. Alright, so the board's nice and clear. Retribution about to deal a lot of damage. 
back up Goldspan. Right, we'll have to try and outrace it here. But if they don't have a follow-up play, they are just taking lethal on the way back. Alright, double strike on Retribution gets the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's pretty land light. But it does have lots of cheap interaction at least, which I like. So I think we can keep. And then ideally pick up a few lands. But we're not gonna get run over with double Blood Chief's Thirst in hand. Turn one Sentinel. Yeah, they can keep their Sentinel for a turn. Next turn we can potentially remove it if it's bothering us that much. Or we can just play Righteous Valkyrie. Looks like another mono green deck. With turn two pack leader, which is a bit more threatening than Sentinel. They could have a snakeskin veil, they don't. And then next turn we can double spell Valkyrie and Thirst. Can maybe see an old growth troll. It's gonna be a shambler into ranger class. And they're still kind of holding priority, which could indicate a blizzard brawl as well, which they had the option of casting last turn and didn't. But yeah, we're gonna stick to the plan. And then is there anything I wanna take out with Blood Chief's Thirsts? Not really. Although... If I take out the Wolf, then uh, Aspirant has a cleaner attack. Which could be worth it. And then next turn Rampage gonna be excellent as well. So there's a the troll. Still nothing. And then probably put counter on the 4-4. Four four. Still dies to Blizzard Brawl, but it does block Haven and Troll if they don't. Ranger class can also get the Troll up to a 5-5. Five five. But I think that still makes sense. And we'll just get in with Valkyrie. And then next turn with double Aspirant, we can quickly outgrow the opponent's creatures. Shambler picks up a counter. One card left in hand. I guess the Lair of the Hydra also a card that tends to hold priority all the time. So they can level up their Ranger class. Or fire up a Faceless Haven. Ooh, Vorinclex, a monstrous raider. That's very effective against our Luminarch Aspirants, so I don't mind double blocking Vorinclex here to take it out. And then they're probably going to take out our Angel. 
which will result in them sacrificing another creature. And then the aspirants get to do their thing again. Sentinel down. Another Valkyrie. So Valkyrie into aspirants. Seems pretty good here. And that should be game. Yeah, the mono green matchup is quite winnable in my experience. Their best card in the matchup is probably Blizzard Brawl to take out our key angels like Righteous Valkyrie, but if they don't remove them, then we can usually take over the late game thanks to cards like Aspirant, Righteous Valkyrie, and eventually fly over for the win. So yeah, that's our Black-White Angels deck in 2022 Standard. A pretty solid choice, and I'm sure we'll get some new Angels in the upcoming Innistrad expansion to power up the deck even more. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.